2018 East Coast Classic Rally Series. 2018 was a big year for classic rallying in Australia with the introduction of the East Coast Classic Rally Series. 63 classic cars turned out during the year to support this great initiative, including both Tom Dermody in a Ford Escort RS1800 and Gary Yeomans in a Datsun 1600. These two teams supported every one of the six events in the series. Robert Gorst in another 1600 attended five rounds and finished the series in fourth outright. Clay Badnock managed to get to four East Coast Classic events in two different cars. Evan Bollard in the Mazda RX2 and Michael O'Hagan in the Ford Escort each took on three rounds of the series. The series kicked off at the Caves Classic Rally in Oberon and Clay Badnock was part of the team who developed the series. Yeah, well here we are, round one, we've got 28 cars. It's been well received and, and well supported, really excited. Tom Dermody was also instrumental in getting the series off the ground and he too was optimistic about its future. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Like, we've got a very good entry for the rally, I think more than we've ever seen at any rally last year, you know, and I think uh, a lot of cars are coming out of the sheds again and we should have a really good run here. And, um, yeah, let's see what happens. in the forests, it was Ryan and Rebecca Smart who stamped their authority on the inaugural event, taking the heat win. Unfortunately, they'd suffer dramas in heat two and were out of outright contention. Michael and Aaron Valentine were also off to a good start. They finished heat one in fourth, but they too would develop issues with the car and they failed to finish heat two. Brett Wright and Robert Edwards were pushing their classic Toyota Sprinter hard all day, but couldn't quite match the pace of the cars out in front of them. Clay Badnock and Katrina Kelly fought hard throughout the day, getting quicker in the second loop of stages in their Toyota Celica RA40. They finished third. Tom Dermody and Owen Moynihan were also quick, but had issues in Stage 7 with the car running on only three cylinders. They finished the event second. But it was Andrew and David Travis in the Nissan Gazelle who would ultimately come away with the win. They were second in Heat 1, but then up the ante in Heat 2 to take the outright victory in the very first event of the East Coast Classic Rally Series. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Excited. People from all over Australia and Queensland and Victoria and the like, so uh, to, to, to get them all in the one place on the weekend and to, to be competitive was, was really good. Round two was in the Victorian township of Mittermitter, and with damp roads and a few new contenders, it was bound to be a competitive classic rally. Phil Thomas and Ken Radnell were at their first East Coast Classic event and showed us how to throw a Ford Escort around the forests, finishing well up the order. Brian Simmons and Dan Perry in the Nissan 200SX were a bit more conservative through the slippery forests and this strategy obviously paying dividends. They were fourth outright. In the race for the podium, Grant Walker and Steph Richards were doing their bit to keep out in front of their competition in the Ford Escort. They were third outright. But the fight for the outright victory was between Tom Dermody in the Escort and Andrew Travis in the Nissan Gazelle. The Gazelle looked and sounded fantastic and Travis drove the car at 10 tenths all day. But the roles were reversed from the first round and after five hard fought stages, the Gazelle was driven into second outright. Dermody and Moynihan had dominated the second heat of the rally. They equaled Travis' time in the first heat. But then the Escort would eventually finish over 40 seconds in front of the Gazelle to take the top place on the podium and the event win. Wow, massive, beautiful, great, great fun. Yeah, I think this is the best rally I've nearly done to date, you know. 
the stages are beautiful, they're um, nice, twisty, real driver stages, real good fun. And the thing has went off like clockwork all day, like, you know. Our classic teams converged on the northern New South Wales township of Kyogle for the Border Rangers Rally, round three of the series. We had some classic royalty entered, with Neil Bates and Coral Taylor bringing their Toyota Celica out for a drive. And all the way from New Zealand was the winner of the Marathon Silver Fern Rally, Derek Ason, in a Ford Escort borrowed from Ed Mulligan. In another Ford Escort, Matt Lining and Craig Morrison would finish Heat 1 in 7th and then improve on that in Heat 2 to come home 5th. 5th would also be their final outright position. Brett Stevens and Dennis Neagle were pushing hard in the Datsun Bluebird. They were up to 4th before dramas saw them retire. Tony Quinn and Kate Catford would benefit from Stevens' demise. They'd pushed the M3 BMW E30 through the afternoon stages to take fourth outright. Tom Dermody and Owen Moynihan were pushing hard. Maybe a little too hard. This off-road excursion costing them over 30 seconds after popping a tyre off the rim. They'd fight back in the afternoon stages into third outright. The New Zealand visitors Derek Ason and Dave Neal were showing the Aussies how to throw a Ford Escort around the Kyogle Shire roads. Their pace was impressive, having competed here two years earlier. They finished in second after chasing Bates and Taylor all day. But they couldn't match the pace of the Celica. Bates was on fire, winning every one of the 12 stages. He dominated the event and was never looking like doing anything but winning. We had a Amazing day, yo. We probably chose too hard a tyre this morning, which cost us a little bit, but uh, this afternoon was amazing. We got a few faster stage times, and to be first classic, first two-wheel drive, and be on the podium, we couldn't ask for any more. The beaches and Clyde River in Batemans Bay would be the backdrop for the next round of the East Coast Classic Rally Series. This was also a round of both the New South Wales and Victorian State Championship. This rally allowed teams to select either a pace noted or a blind route chart event. And Grant Walker was back for another attempt at taking some classic points. He was doing the route charter blind rally as he also wanted to score points in the Victorian Championship, which doesn't allow pace notes. Jack Monkhouse and Katie Fletcher had the very quick Datsun 180B out of the garage for a warm-up event before tackling the WRC later in the year. They were on pace notes and finished third outright, but the exit off this bridge in the ninth stage could have seen a very different result. Lucky to save that. Press into eight left. Dermody in the Escort was one of the quickest over the forest roads. He didn't put a foot wrong all day and finished second outright. In the long four left of the Hill Titan Territory. But another newcomer to the series would take the round victory. Ben Barker and Damien Long were unstoppable in the BMW 320iS. They'd set the fastest time over every one of the nine stages, winning the event convincingly with a one minute margin over Dermody. Tom's given me a good fight all day, so it's been great fun. So um, I don't even know where we ended up, to quite honest, outright. But um, no, we're mixing them up to full drive, so it was a good day. Because of the route chart and event running alongside the pace note category, Clay Badnock and Katrina Kelly would end up taking more points than those in the pace note event. He would walk away with the equivalent points of second outright. <laughs> Carl Stewart and Matt James in the Datsun would also benefit from running on route charts. They were very competitive, even against their rivals on pace notes. Their points from the rally equal to finishing the event third outright.
the Bathurst Rally would have the smallest classic field for the season, with just 12 teams scoring points in this, the second last round. Gary Yeomans has been consistently scoring points at each round and was on track for a good overall result in the Classic Series. He was equal first in Heat 1 at Bathurst and was looking like scoring his first podium finish. But it wasn't to be. Dropping down to 8th in Heat 2, he finished 4th outright. Evan Bollard was on his way to a good finish. He was third in Heat 1, but suffered issues in Heat 2 and was forced to retire. PJ O'Keefe and Paddy Skelton would see their first podium finish for the season, driving the Ford Escort into third outright. Now a Volvo 240 isn't exactly what most people would choose to go rallying in. But Peter Ewing and Anna Ritson think it's the perfect choice and we're pushing the turbo machine, setting consistent times. Their perseverance paid off, finishing the rally second outright. But it was Michael O'Hagan and Michael Benson who would come up trumps, taking their first East Coast Classic Rally win. It had been a bit of a disastrous season for the pair up to this point, so it was a great moment for the escort driver. Surprised to see us finish, never mind where we're at, that's brilliant. Just stayed clean all day, made us through. We're just glad to get the car going again, so happy man. Dermody and Moynihan suffered badly in stage two, dropping down to almost last in stage. This would affect their heat one result significantly, they were eight. but they'd fight back to win Heat 2, giving them more points than Ewing, Yeomans and O'Keefe. And in a mammoth effort to keep going, Nathan Quinn and Ray Winwood-Smith smashed their rear brakes in the first pass over the Daylight Creek stage. They scrambled to fix the issue, got it sorted, and then finished Heat 2 in second. The series was the Monaro Stages Rally, based out of Cooma, south of Canberra. Rain was predicted and that's exactly what we got. A massive downpour leading to the cancellation of Heat 2. So the rally was reduced to a single heat. A few new teams would give the East Coast Classic Rally Series a go, with Peter Dimmick and Luke Lafan getting the Datsun 240Z out in the mud. Darkie Bar Smith and John O'Forrest were also having their first outing at an East Coast Classic Rally. They were putting in some consistent times in their Datsun 200B. Their consistency rewarding them with fourth outright. Fro Horobin and Michael Taylor were also new to the series and having a great run despite the conditions. They did well at their first attempt, finishing third outright in the Datsun 180B. And in a fitting end to the season, the two people instrumental in kick-starting the East Coast Classic Rally Series would finish the final event on the top two spots on the podium. Clay Badnock and Katrina Kelly would finish in second outright in the Celica, solidifying their position in the series. Their best seven heat results were enough to give them third for the season. But in what can only be described as a brilliant drive and brilliant season, Tom Dermody and Owen Moynihan took out the win at the final rally and are the first East Coast Classic Rally Series champions. They finished every one of the 11 heats for 2018, an achievement not repeated by any other team. You got to finish every rally and we didn't necessarily keep our eyes on the championship we just kept our eye on winning every, every event and finishing every event we weren't um, necessarily the fastest all the time but we finished every event and now we've ended up here which is good you know.
Whilst not finishing every rally, Gary Yeomans and Cam Baker did start every rally for the season in their Datsun 1600. Another fantastic commitment by a team who probably had the furthest to travel to get to each round. Their commitment rewarded with the runner-up position for the season. So let's go over to the final leaderboard to see the points tally. There's also a four-wheel drive category in the East Coast Classic Rally Series. Tim Woods and Alison Lorerick were at the Caves Classic event and then followed that up with a visit to Batemans Bay for round four. They won the four-wheel drive category in their Mitsubishi Galant VR4. Let's also take a quick look at a few of the other teams that made it to more than one round. It was good to see a couple of Holden Commodores having a run. Rob Innell and Lizzie Firm were throwing theirs around the forest. They entered both the Caves Classic and the Rally of the Bay. Scott Anderson and Michael Strade also looked like they were having fun in their version of the Aussie Muscle Car Classic. They completed the first round at the Caves Classic Rally, but failed to finish their second attempt at the Rally of the Bay. Ron and Stephen McKinnon were in a Lancer LA, once a very popular rally car. The Rally of the Bay was their first event in the series, and they also went on to finish the Monaro stages, scoring points in the last round. Leslie Adams in the Datsun 1600 made the trip to Batemans Bay after scoring points at the Midder Mountain Rally. They finished the series in 15. Sean Casey and Bob Selby Wood had a bad start to the series, failing to finish at the Caves Classic Rally in their Lancer LB but they did manage to finish the Bathurst Rally later in the year. Ryan Kelly and Connor Crowley would bring their Mark II Escort out for the final two rounds of the series, taking in the Bathurst and Cooma sites to finish the series in 14th. Colin McLean and Malcolm Holdham tried their luck at the East Coast series, but only managed to get to the first two rounds in their Corolla TE37. Graham Wallace and Brian Ward chose a few of the southern rallies to get the Peugeot 309 GTI dirty, including the final round where they were trying to perfect their Scandinavian flick. And finally, Bruce Garland has probably got the most colourful escort in the series. His nephew airbrushing the entire car with a mural that makes it stand out from the crowd. They competed at the Caves Classic and then went on to do the Border Rangers Rally in the East Coast Classic Series. Thanks for joining us as we review the 2018 season. 2019 will see eight events on the calendar and it's going to be another exciting year of Classic Rally action.